Good morning, good morning, good morning, Soul Man and Friends people. How are you all? I hope that you are all absolutely amazing. I know I am on this fantastic 28th of January, which is a Thursday, I think it is. Do we even actually know where we are or what time it is? It's mental. It's crazy right now. So, this morning we have got my very lovely friend John Siri on the show, and he is from A Matter of Energy or it's a matter of energy. And John is going to be speaking about everything, absolutely everything to do with the aura. So we've got a really fascinating um, show for you guys today. So enjoy. Good morning, John. How are you? Can you hear me, John? <laughs> oh, we've got you. No, we've no. I think John's possibly having a, a little bit of a blip with his um, internet. I don't know. No, <laughs> <laughs> Everything was working fine up until this point, and now John's frozen on us. So while we wait for John to come back, John, if you can hear me, just let me know if, um, when you're back. It is an energy glitch, absolutely clear. Um, it's funny how we're talking about energy this morning and the aura and electromagnetic field and all the rest of it, and John's definitely having trouble with his technology. So John is going to be talking to us this morning all about the aura and how um, <coughs> and what it is, basically. So John, can you hear me now? Bear with us, folks. I promise this will change. Fingers crossed. John, can you hear me? So we've not had a soul man surgery like this where, where our guest speaker can he um, hear me or communicate. I'm sure he's talking back, but obviously it's just not working right now. John, can you hear me okay? <laughs> Good morning, folks. How are you? All? Hope you're all well. Just going to send John a wee message. So you're not getting sound, John, is that right?
Right, folks, so John cannot hear us. So what we're going to, and this was working completely fine until um, until we went live. So I don't know what the issue with the audio is, but we're just going <coughs> to hold with us. I promise you we will um, get back. We're just trying to sort it live here. <laughs> Can you hear me, John? Okay, so this morning we have got on the show John Siri, the Aura Man, and he is going to be talking, hopefully, all about the Aura and what the Aura is and how it reacts and how it interacts with the body, how it interacts with other people. <laughs> Mercury retrograde, Claire, you are absolutely right. God knows what's going on. So here's John coming back in. So hopefully he can hear us. He hear you now. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, leave and come back again, eh? It's like when, when, when your laptop's broken or when your TV's not working, switch oh. off at the wall and then plug it back in again. That's right. Reboot it. <laughs> <laughs> John, I don't know what happened there, but we've got you now, which is the main thing. Yeah. So, John, you are John Siri, the Aura Man, as you're more commonly known <laughs> by everybody. Yeah. And for anybody who wants to follow John's page, it is a math, it's a matter of energy. And we'll just leave that scrolling down the bottom of the screen for you guys. So go and follow John. Um, John works with us at the shop, not right now because nobody's working at the shop, but John is at the shop um, the last or the, the last Friday of every month and the first Friday of every month. So yeah. those two weeks that kind of hold the months together, John's with us. And he does all different types of aura readings when he's at the shop. And the best way to book in is just very simply to go on to our booking system and you'll be able to see um, the services that John provides. Obviously, right now, the booking system isn't live because of the current um, holiday that we're all having. <clears throat> but as soon as that holiday lifts, we will put dates back in for John being back with us. So, John, talk to us. What is the order? Aura. I know that's a really like obvious question for you, but what is the aura for anybody who doesn't know? Well, everybody will understand that it's this electromagnetic field that surrounds every living thing. And I like to look at it two ways. I look at it more like an, an energetic thing. So we've got this physical body and we've got this energy body, which is your aura, which starts from the inside out. It's not this cloud of colour that just follows you about. and Like the one of the mood rings that you usually get, it just changes colour or whatever your mood. <laughs> but it all starts from just your emotions. Yeah. And just what you're feeling and just... Everything you come in contact with, everybody you come in contact with, anything you think, eat, it affects your whole aura. And it, it's constantly changing. It's, it's interesting, John, because a lot of people do think that the aura is just this bubble of colour around you. Absolutely, yeah. It doesn't really change. You know, um, sometimes your aura will be this colour or that colour. That's people's perception of it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I find when I'm working with the system myself and you'll get that people have been training as mediums and healers and they expect all these bright purples and indigo colours. But when they work in the system and then if they see they're either just, they call it the boring red, the boring yellow, 
but people don't realise that things go on in life as well. So mm -hmm. at that moment, if life's affecting them, then it is going to affect, it's going to change. For that minute, they're not a healer or a medium, they're just a person. Yeah. I think what, what's really funny about that as well, though, is that, um, you know, we, we, we all go through seasons of life, don't we? And yeah. it, it's like anything, you know, it's when we're trying to, we're always trying to self-regulate and be that better version of ourselves. So could you imagine if you were living in this constant state of bright indigo, you would be like some sort of angelic being, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. You'd be tuned to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not healthy, as you know, being in that state for 24-7. Yeah. I, I love when, I, like when you're in, because I always love jumping in front of the the camera and getting a wee shot and seeing yeah. more. Every time it's always different, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. never. Yeah. And when you spoke there about the system, because um, you, you do have a system that you use, um, which is a, a very scientific piece of kit, isn't it, John? It's not just, you know. Yeah, it's um, what it does. Also, what is the system called, actually? Just the aura system. Yeah. That's fine. It's, it's oh. an energy imaging system. Cool. And what is the system? Uh, basically, what it is, I use this hand sensor with it. So what the hand sensor does, it measures your skin temperature. It measures the electrodermal activity. That's when you touch something, you get back static. We all have that running over the surface of your body. Again, it's leading out. That is part of your aura as well. So it portrays the energy surrounding you in colour. Yeah. And it works with uh, the spectrum of light, which is the seven colours of the rainbow, it's the seven colours that allow us to see the thousands of colours that we see every day. We do have a bit of a theme on colour this week. Susan Watson was talking all about colour um, therapy. I, and I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was it was really funny because we were speaking about you on Monday as well, saying, well, I wonder what John's perception on colour is because we know that when we ask him, you're going to say, well, what does that colour mean to you? Absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, I did a, a colour therapy course as well and just using colour for healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting though, isn't it, how, how colour has a ma such a massive impact on our lives? Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, as you say, people's perception of colour. And for long and weary all I heard from people saying like greens for healing and I thought no I'm going to try this out so I got one person set up in the system I got the place done in green light and just asked them what they felt they didn't see it was a green light they had their eyes covered mm -hmm. and it was a totally different feeling from what they not told to feel about how they should feel when, when it's green. And that's why I like people to go and explore what what it is, what colour means to them. And I suppose, you know, if everybody feels different colours differently, don't they? You know, like, so when, when Susan and I were speaking on Monday there, you know, there is generic... Um, generic feelings and, and meanings for colour but I suppose like anything in life it's a it's not a one size fits all thing is it you know no um, absolutely not there's some people that will feel colour differently yeah you'll see it as well there's people that see colour differently yeah and it's we'll see different I mean, my perception is say yellow might be different from yours. Mm -hmm. And although we see it as we know a yellow colour, but it just depends on that 
that frequency and wavelength that's been shown to us. We were, we were speaking about that. See the, the soul man surgery, the banner and everything that's above my yeah. head. I see that as green. Mm -hmm. Like I, I see a paler shade of green. It's like a bluey green, but loads of people will say, no, it's blue. Yeah. And oh. that, that's what I mean. I mean, in the retina, we've got the three, uh, I think it's the rods, <clears throat> which is red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. Some people have got more red than green. Some people have got more blue than red. And it's just how the brain works it out for us. It's really fascinating as well, because see, when, when we've got the the aura equipment in the shop there, yeah. like, we like to test it, don't we, John? <laughs> oh, <aye. laughs> It's a good experiment, we are. So we've done things like, um, and I know that John does this way with other um, places as well, and it's, it's something that John does in workshops and, and that type of thing. But, you know, when you bring a crystal into the equation, it's amazing to see the instant reaction to a crystal on the screen, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's the same using oils as well. Remember, I've tried that as well, and just the effect, just spraying oil into somebody's aura. Yeah. That was the aura soma sprays that we had. That's right, yeah. 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 And then we, we've we've um, adapted it even more as well, and we've, we've got our own range of aura sprays at the shop now as well. Um, That's right, yeah. And the lovely Jen from Your Wee Beauty, she's she's produced them, which is fantastic. So, you know, you can really see people's energy changing with these different things. Yeah. But I suppose you can't see it with your physical eyes. So That's right. it's really hard sometimes to to know like How's this thing affecting me if it's no measurable with my own eyes? You know exactly. And you find as well that the people that produce them as well, so the likes of Jen and I forget the rest of their names. I've got a blank moment. But you can see they're just their own personalities are in that as well. Yeah. Because they're all they're selling similar products. They're different. Absolutely. And you just need to see, speak to the people themselves and see the difference with them. Mm -hmm. That's um, April saying there that she love, love and completely fascinated with the aura system. April's um, jumped in front of that quite a few times with you, I think. Yeah. Louise is saying, and music changing the aura. I'm, I'm, assu I'm assuming that she means aura instead of otter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know April and Louise have been part of your group as well. It's going all quiet, oh, so I think I've lost you. <laughs> it kicked me out of the studio. What's going on there? Please tell me you can hear me, John. Hi, John. No, you're there. Yes. <laughs> you disappeared. Yeah, I've kicked out the studio <laughs> for whatever reason, but I'm back. Main thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I was saying, sorry, um, Louise is talking about how um, music changes the aura. Yeah, that thing, well music again, it's, another, it's like a deeper vibration, so it reaches right to your soul, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, when sound reaches into the aura, it just, it sound goes right through you, practically. And you know the body's made up of seventy percent water, mm -hmm. and when sound reaches that, although we hear it with the ears, but 
it does reach it at quite a level. It, it's still saying that you hear a noise and that's just going right through me. And literally, it has just gone right through you. And that and, um, sound used in a healing as well. Yeah, and that is something else that you do as well, which completely complements the the aura stuff, which is that yeah. you do sound healing as, as well, don't you? That's right, yeah. Um, and we have experienced, myself and the Soul Man team, we have experienced a sound bath um, in person, and oh my geez, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It really, it really does change everything. You know, the, 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 that gonging, it's that's amazing, isn't it? I don't even know how to describe it. It just takes you somewhere else completely, yeah. doesn't? It? Yeah, I know my first experience as well. I had the same effect. I was just, I thought everybody got up and left and just left me. <laughs> it's funny because. Susan was speaking about sound baths. She, she'd been to a sound bath, and I wanted to get your take on this, right, because Susan had been to a sound bath, and she said that after it, she felt absolutely awful. She couldn't stand. She was shaking. She was, she was, it had a really adverse effect on her. So why, why do you think that would be? Um, I think it's like, any deep meditation, sometimes you might come out it too quick mm -hmm. and you feel a bit heady. And I've seen where if somebody's needing quite a bit of a healing as well, and it can have that effect on a person. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really just a person. Some people love them. Mm -hmm. Some people hate them, they just can't stand the noise. And I, I suppose if, if, you know, Susan had went through that experience and it had really shifted a lot of stale, stagnant energy that was stuck in her auric field, I would imagine that, that would feel a bit, you know, or it would leave you feeling a bit, whoa, a bit all over the place, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like any other healing that just doesn't start and stop in that mm. moment it will carry on for days yeah and what what what's your thought john on um you know when you interact with people who might not be the nicest people on the planet <laughs> because <laughs> obviously your aura your aura is more complex than people think you know it's it moves right out to nine feet outside your body doesn't it yeah so, you know, if you were coming into contact with people who were maybe not so nice, how would that affect your aura or your energy? Uh, it's kind of like, so if you're going to, to, to say Asda, and you're going and you're just full of beans, you're full of life, and you're walking about and you just feel yourself starting to drain. Mm -hmm. That's what people are. No, deliberately sucking the, the life out of you, but they're draining your energy. And then you go home with sore backs, sore heads, you're dead grumpy and just wonder where it all come from. Mm -hmm. And it's just how these things do affect you. It's the same as well that if you're in a group of people and there's just that one strong person in a group and they end up kind of controlling the group a wee bit. Mm -hmm. And the best way I've heard that described is it was a, the Dutch inventor of the, the pendulum. Mm -hmm. And he had about half a dozen pendulum clocks all swinging at different, different times. And after a couple of hours, they all fell in line and started swinging at the same speed. And it's just yeah. when that strongest energy seems to kind of pull in weaker energies, if you want, not weaker and as a negative weak, but it's that strong energy that seems to overpower and take over. And sometimes it's how we get caught up in life as well. 
Yeah. If we're yeah. in a group and all of a sudden it just takes one person. I mean, I've always, you've managed to discipline. I've listened to you when you say you don't listen to gossip, that yeah. type of thing. But if you're in like a group and somebody starts gossiping, then all of a sudden everybody joins in. Mm -hmm. And that's entrainment, pretty much what that's called. It's funny that, isn't it? You know, because um, people do uh, some, something that I've certainly noticed about human behaviour, something that I probably I don't do, you know, I'll... I'll I'll have discussions with people about factual things. Yeah. But I'm always very, um, I've always got this very balanced perspective on it. But I think it's really easy to, you know, be pulled into the energy of people having conversations that are, you know, destructive or not very nice or, um, yeah. And I suppose you, you see people being drawn into that and feeling quite uncomfortable. So, Again, is it that same thing, you know, where the energy just pulls them in? That's pretty much all it is. It's just that strong energy pulls you. And it's the same way as healers as well, which we all are. And I used to test it myself when I worked in the supermarket. I used to stand in a nail on my own. And before I know it, I would have half a dozen people around me doing nothing. So I'd walk down the bottom and they all followed you. <laughs> it was your aftershave, John. That's that I. <laughs> it was part of me exploring my energy to find out just how it works, how this was all affecting me. Mm. And when I first came into this movement as well, I couldn't understand why the spirit world are having such an adverse effect mm -hmm. and when you asked about it in your group all you were told was it's the energy no one tell me about it what is it why is it having this effect oh it's just the energy you'll be all right but that wasn't enough for me <laughs> yeah and you you and i have had great discussions about this you know um, yeah. how that can be a very throwaway comment, you know. Um, oh, it's just the energy. And you know, yeah. I, I'm quite passionate about teaching my mediums that are that are up and coming um, in my mediumship mentorship, as you well know, because you were part of their training. Uh, um, yeah. And really explaining what is energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think when you understand it, everything in your life just clicks, doesn't it? Exactly. And if I'm working with my groups, so the first thing I'll say, I'll try and explain to them is to go and explore their own energy, learn about it. Then yeah. you'll get a better idea of who you really are. Yeah, because we, we, we go through our lives and, you know, like we look after our teeth, we look after our eyes, we go to the doctor when we don't feel well. <laughs> Um, you know, if we need to lose a bit of weight, we'll eat better. If we need to yeah. sleep better, we'll, we'll put in routines. But we're actually quite negligent about our own energy, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I have been for years. And it's just in the last few years, just working more intense with it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what you can do. I mean, with the, the power of your own aura as well. I mean, you're talking about people having an adverse effect on your aura. And it's, you can learn just to throw these people out your aura. Just with empowering intent. And it's amazing how that does have an effect, though, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you think about you're manipulating your aura and your energy centers for healing. You're directing that healing. Mm-hmm. And just think, you can actually direct that energy to yourself into your own life. Yeah. So I'm interested to, to, and I'm sure that lots of people will be thinking the same, um, how can you stop someone from manipulating your energy? You know, if 
for example, if you were out in the shops, you know, because no, nobody wants to go out shopping and then come back feeling drained because they've taken a wee PC everybody's energy, do yeah. they? So yeah. what, what would be your top tips on how to right, protect yourself, I suppose, when you're out? Yeah, the best one I go because people naturally think that pull your energy in, but you're then pulling in all that other adverse energy. Yeah. We did an exercise at the college one time. There's about 20 of us stood up in a wee platform, and she told us just stand there. It was a, an energy and mediumship course I was on. Mm -hmm. And she's asking, how did that feel? So we're all kind of shoulder to shoulder. And it was uncomfortable, as you can imagine. So she said, right, just go within yourself, just in your own power, just for a minute. And then visualise just pushing past all this energy, pushing past people, just push it right out into the universe if you want. And before you knew it, you, you were adjusting and you get room to move. And mm -hmm. it's, just, it's learning to discipline it. So as opposed to just pulling it in, just push past it. So you would you would be thinking, you know, when, you, when you're out there, and I, I suppose, you know I, know, I know we've had this discussion before, but everything is all about your intent, isn't it? You know, and it's exactly the same with your aura. Yeah. So when you're out there, if you're if you're imagining yourself with this big, um, I, I would probably imagine. I'm going to be really careful what I say here. I would imagine mine to be about two or three foot. <laughs> um, <laughs> my aura, I mean. But you know, um, imagining that bubble around me and nothing can get in. Yeah. Just giving out. Constant, constant, constantly giving out good energy. That's that. Uh, it's the, the power intention that it's so powerful and we don't use it enough. Mm -hmm. And again, it's when you're not wanting someone in your aura, it's just that power intention again. Mm -hmm. It's just sending that out. And within minutes, you see people stepping back from you. I used to quite Some, a lot in March and April when yeah. the, the two the six foot rule come in and if I felt somebody wasn't standing six foot behind me I just yeah. seen myself pushing them mm -hmm. and you see them stepping back mm. <laughs> that does work I suppose some people might watching this as well might think really just think about it and they'll step back but, you know, it's exactly the same as saying to someone, step back. Mm -hmm. Like, take a couple of steps back here. Exactly. You know, you're just saying it inside and in your energy. you're Because, again, it's intent. It, it, it changes it, doesn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. sorry, John, on your own. <laughs> I'm, I'm also quite interested to find, because um, lots of people... And I know that we had a couple of questions before that I wanted to um, ask you to answer because a couple of people had messaged just saying, can you ask John about this? And somebody had said that they felt that when they were in groups of people, certain people, that they feel attacked. Um, it's almost like when they're in that room, they feel like everybody's like pushing them, attacking them. Um, I'm trying to summarise it because the message was quite lengthy, but basically um, what they've said is that when they're in a room full of people, um, they can feel almost claustrophobic. Um, I can feel attacked. I go home with sore heads, nausea, um, and feeling quite sick. I've been to see a couple of mediums and they've said that my energy is blocked. I get a lot of these kind of questions and somebody came and spoke to me, a medium told her she had a leak in her aura. And <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> he was only taking seventy pound to sort that. <laughs> but um, madness. Yeah, energy is constantly at flow. Your aura is constantly at flow. We can affect the flow just by how we feel, how we think. But people talk a lot about blockages, but it's more a it's either an imbalance. I put it down here as opposed to a blockage. Mm -hmm. So it's just learning to balance. It's just learning to align yourself. And there's many techniques you can do that and just in minutes, just to align your energy centers and then push past whatever you feel is blocking. But it is only natural that that person will feel all that and They've obviously got high sensitivity. Mm -hmm. It's learning to work with it and discipline it a wee bit more. That is my thinking, you know, when someone's going through experiences like that, that these are very highly sensitive people. You know, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm talking highly sensitive, I mean that they're very sensitive to energy. Yeah. That, yeah. So what, what would be, the, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago there that, you know, there is a few exercises that people can do just to rebalance their energy centers. Yeah. Um, the quickest one, I would say, again, it's just taking your time and just not even going with them, just centering yourself a wee bit. Mm-hmm. And would that be, how, how would people do that, John? So would you imagine like sitting there and just, you know, like really just yeah. coming to yourself and centering? That's that. It's even just standing and just, as you said, it's going into that energy. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to connect with your own energy. Then you're going to kind of ground yourselves people call it so yeah. you're taking it right down then you're bringing that energy up through your energy centers there's no need to go through all the colors because sometimes people get mixed up the colors and then they've got to start all over again so you just imagine that this energy is being aligned and then just put it out into the atmosphere a good a good thing that I do, John. I don't know about you, but um, what I like to do is see if I'm feeling at all ever like well, overwhelmed by things and that my energy is a bit off. Um, I do. I, I can you know put my hands here and my forehead, and I just yeah. in, hold it there and then breathe out and see just that action of up and down. Yeah really helps to just bring you down and center yourself i know for some people it might look really silly right but try it honestly bring your hands down here and as you breathe in sorry yeah breathe in hands up and then breathe out and that's just a really good way of just bringing yourself back to center yeah and there's, there's so many techniques out there isn't there yeah like just holding Yours. Music as well, John. That harmonizes the, the, the energy in your body as well, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And things that you like to listen to, things that feel appealing to your energy, to your soul, I suppose, um, are things that will balance you, aren't they? Yeah. So I like to listen to a lot of inspirational stuff. That's why yeah. I'm always taken with the, the stuff you've got written in the wall and the soul man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, any kind of like uh, if it's an inspirational quote, you know that inspirational quote and or the, an inspirational speech with the music, you can do this, you know, and it's like it really does centre you, doesn't it? Yeah, a favourite one of mine is the one I've got behind me. You'll see it in the frame. And that's the one from Marianne Williamson, Your Deepest Fear. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a brilliant, yeah. brilliant. It's a poem, that, isn't it? Hmm? It's a poem, that, isn't it? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a lengthy one as well. 
it is a lengthy one, but it's once you you get to the end of it and you think, "Hi, that's right, it is me," and you can do these things. You can read it out for me if you want. <laughs> if you want to, yeah, absolutely. But I think what what I'm what I'm what I'm really getting from today, John, is that you know to balance your energy and to have your auric field in a place of um, equilibrium, I suppose, is to do things that feel good. You know, um, listen to music, eat good food, um, have a positive intention there. Yeah. And it's just all the things that you do up at the soul man. That's one of the reasons I like coming up. I like being in that energy. Because mm -hmm. I know even... I spoke to April just a wee while ago and said to her how I was missing being up there and I, I watch all the, the posts on Facebook just to keep in touch with it all. And it's yeah. just been in that energy. It's true yeah. though, you know, when, when you're when you're in that energy and with like minded people, everything just makes sense though, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, and it's hard to find places like that. And when you're not, like when you're in a place that you're you're not in that energy and when you're feeling that things are, are difficult and, you know, people are difficult and, you know, I'm sure you'll agree. When you're in a workplace where there's so many different characters. Yeah. It can sometimes be quite overwhelming for people that are sensitive. Oh God, I and you, you do you can get yourself into some states as well, yeah. emotionally, because it does play big time on your emotions, and then we start overthinking things, then we stress ourselves out, then we knock ourselves sick, mm -hmm. and then we we hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm always fascinated by the. You know, like the, the environment that we've created and you see people, our team coming in more specifically and everybody just gets on really well. It's, it's a real family. Um, you know, we all work well together. We all care about each other. Um, and it's a very unique working environment. Yeah. yeah, you can see that I've become quite a people watcher over the past few years. Surprise of jail for it. <laughs> but you see people and you just watch their energy and just you can tell just the kind of mood they're in. Mm -hmm. And again, it's coming into your place as well and you're watching the energy and you're seeing what's going on. And you can see that people are genuinely happy to be there. Yeah. And it's not a case of or oh, like Stephen, or go sunshine up his backside. It's not a case of that. They generally like being there. Yeah. And it's all to do with the energy in the place. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're thinking, John, about, um, you know, because there, there might be people watching this today and they might be thinking, um, how, how, how can you see an aura? Um, is, is it something that you can see with your physical eyes? You can train yourself to see it, yeah. I actually don't see what is. Mm -hmm. The way people see colour and all the bright lights, I see energy around people. And it's just, I like that. And I've tried for years to see what is. And it just, it doesn't work for me. I said this to be more round about people. But as soon as I see that, it disappears, it becomes energy. And mm -hmm. the energy tells me so much more about somebody. I suppose most people will experience other people's auras every day without even knowing that they're feeling it. You know, they'll, they'll be feeling it. Oh, absolutely. It's the same. You, you feel color, yeah feel people's auras, you feel their emotions. I mean, we all have this amazing, a 
ability to ensure other people and other things. And some people don't realise that that ability is there and why they're getting so upset when they're getting into packed supermarkets. Yeah. And picking up other people's ailments. And what what's your thoughts as well on the aura and the spirit world? Because I know that um, we, we've actually got a really brilliant video that we done a few years ago. Yeah. And it was you, you were, you were taking me through a meditation, if you like, saying, yeah. oh, now I want you just to bring the spirit world in. And on the camera, you could very clearly see this little dot of white light coming towards me. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Um, again, it's the more you look after yourself, you look after your aura, the easier it is for the spirit world to manipulate. And they do, they very much come into your aura, which is why we get the, the energy. Um, just the effects when we think that we get the shivers, we get the, the itchy scalp, web effects. And it's just that the two energies combining, so you're getting a reaction. So it's about like putting two magnets together, you're going to get a reaction. So you've got these two powerful energies coming together. And a lot of people might read it a different way. So would you think for someone to be for someone to be the best version of themselves in a psychic mediumistic way that they should really be looking after all their energy centers including the physical body absolutely yeah i have to say that my when when i when i was a bit um <clears throat> lighter than i am now when i'd lost a wee bit of weight um i've put a wee bit of weight back on very recently over the last two years but um, when I was at my slimmest, I have to say that my mediumship was much better. I, w I had a better connection. Yeah, because so, your energy would be sky high. Yeah. You, you've got a big energy anyway. Yeah. But I can imagine losing the weight, looking after yourself, you're building that up even further. Yeah, I was like, wow! <laughs> And, and you think about it, if you are stressed out and it does affect the body, so you'll get the, the imbalances in your energy centres, so the spirit world won't be able to work as properly as they would like to. And that's where people get mixed up with kind of blockages. It's like I'm blocking the spirit world. We don't, we just deplete the energy a wee bit and they can't work the way they would like. Mm -hmm. And then we get stressed out about it, thinking, oh, they've stepped back from me and I don't feel them anymore. <laughs> yeah, and it's just because your energy's got a little bit more sluggish, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's nothing to do with the connection, I suppose. Um, and right now, obviously, we're in the middle of an uh, extended holiday by the Scottish government or by the UK government yeah. um, because of this pandemic that's going on so i'm sure that every single person i would be fascinated to actually like hook your aura equipment up to a satellite and just have a wee view at the the human race right now <laughs> yeah absolutely so what, just, what would your thoughts be on what's going on with people's energy right now um i think with the, the stress it's there's a lot of even with mental health now. I mean, this time of the year normally is bad for, for people. Yeah. That is adding to it. And I have to admit, it's the first time I've really felt it as well. Mm -hmm. So I could imagine just the world itself is it's not in a good place, kind of mentally or energetically. But it's getting better. It's honestly, it's it's such a big thing, you know. Um, 
very, very simple things that can affect your energy, you know. So I don't watch the news. And I always find that if I watch the news or watch the TV, um, it pulls my energy down. Like, see, see yeah. all the soaps, Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders, all of that. Like, it's doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing positive about any of these programs. It's all, you know, like um, we Gina's cheating with a man over the road and um, yeah. the wifey that owns the corner shops killed the guy that owns the factory. And, you know, like <laughs> it's madness if you think about it. You know, like as human beings, we're, con we're, we're created to succeed, but we're conditioned by the shite of media, yeah. I suppose, to make us think that we're not okay. Yeah, and that's where the entrainment comes in as well, though, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know, the, I, and I say I don't watch the news, right, but uh, yesterday I um, watched the First Minister's briefing only <laughs> to know what was going on, right? Yeah. Which I suppose we have to do mm -hmm. these things, okay? But very, very quickly, when I looked at the, the live stream, the, the first thing that I noticed was the comments. Lots of really negative comments. Oh, here we go, this pish again. All of this yeah. nonsense, right? So I just swiped left. I was like, I'm, I didn't want to see the comments. All I want to see is what this woman's got to say about, you know, um, where we currently are at. But I suppose mm. someone watching that, they could they could be reading these comments, and I would imagine, if you imagine it like a thermometer, as they read these negative comments, their energy's doing this. Yeah. And then they come out the other end of that, not feeling, because the message itself is actually quite, you know, it's, these are the facts and figures. This is what we're doing. Let's move on, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the comments that come with it that make people's energy go boof. Absolutely. It was the same way. I really get caught up in what was going on in America recently. And I couldn't believe just how caught up I was in it. I, I got to the stage and I thought, no, I can't do this. Because this has affected me. Yeah, it's how does it make you feel? You know, it's thinking like that, isn't yeah. it? You know? mm -hmm. How are things making you feel? How how do your friends make you feel when you're with certain people? You know, and I, I have to say, um, and you'll know this, John, I'm very, very mindful of how people affect my energy. And yeah. when, when, people, when people are affecting my energy in an adverse way, I walk away. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, I suppose people would view me as being rude or being a bit disconnected, I suppose. Um, you know, I know Claire's watching right now, but Claire's seen firsthand, you know, um, people come into the shop or into my energy that I do not vibrate with at all. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do, John, to stop me from, like, I just disconnect. I can't even speak to the person. <laughs> um, so would you think that's quite a healthy thing to do? <clears throat> my thoughts on that is your aura is constantly protecting you. We've got this protection layer within this aura. If somebody's coming into your aura, they're going to do you harm. Mm -hmm. Not physical harm, but any harm, the bell start ringing. So yeah. what we're bad at is not listening to it. But now I've got the stage well, that's having that effect. Why is it having that effect? Yeah. But no, I would totally dis I would totally agree with you. If mm -hmm. people are coming in, they're having that effect, then you've got to preserve yourself. 
it's not being big headed, it's not being egotistic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with loving yourself. Sometimes it takes us a long way to do that in our life, but you know what's fascinating about it though is I always find that if I'm feeling that way with someone, um, if I continue that relationship, um, you know, just say I, I feel, I suppose it's all about learning, isn't it? We're always learning. Um, if I felt like that in the past, I ignored it, you know, um, and I was like, right, okay, it's totally fine. This is just my imagination. Whereas I'm feeling it all around me. Yeah. This is making me feel so uncomfortable. This person, mm -hmm. they, they, I don't know why. But then when you when you question them and say to them, well, I have to speak to you. This is making me feel uncomfortable. Like, oh, stop being silly. You're being paranoid. You're being this. You're being that. Yeah. Um, and you walk away thinking, right, it is me. Mm -hmm. And then they, they prove you wrong, or they prove you right, sorry, and then yeah. they, they show their true colours, and you think, why did I allow myself to be sucked into that? Exactly. It, it's like we get put into situations to learn from them. That's the way I look at it. As I say myself, we get caught up in a situation, there was a lot of games playing going on, and before I, I knew it, I get involved in it. So yeah. obviously these things blow up. And then when I step back, and just like yourself, I thought, why did I let that happen? Mm -hmm. It's crazy, so isn't it? You, you do see it, you feel it. It's like, even if you're going out, you go in a place, and there's no a nice feeling. But you go in anyway. Mm -hmm. And then something kicks off in it. Might not be anything to do with yourself, but it's guaranteed. And it's just this aura is protecting you. Yeah. You learn to listen to a bit more. I know you can feel the energy in a place. You know, like a good example of it is, is me and my wife were out for dinner, like pre-COVID, I think it was maybe about this time last year on a, close to our wedding anniversary and we were in the place and all of the, the staff were running about daft and there was stress in the air um, and the manager had came over and the manager was like, can I help you? You know, and she was very, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, 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 can I just say, you know, I'm feeling that there's a lot of like really sticky energy in here. Um, what, what's going on? She's like, we're just all really stressed because it's so busy. So you can change that. But you're leading your team. Yeah. I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> you're leading your team and they're feeding from that stress. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. and that's it. I know that when I was a manager in retail and it used to be Go and find out what kind of mood John's in before we speak to him. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Got, we've got a couple of questions, John, because that's us at almost an hour already. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll go. Are you okay to go an extra five minutes? Just purely yeah. Just, yeah. those first ten, five, ten minutes we were we were we weren't able to talk. Um, so Emma is saying there, do you guys also think perhaps those feelings are something for us to deal with? Maybe we're vibrating like that because something within us rather because of rather than because of them? That's a really good question, Emma. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's one of the things I always question as well. Rather than just Real think it's something to do with somebody else. I do explore myself as well. I do mm. explore my own energy. It's kind of working out, is this me, is it them? So I, can, I get where Emma's coming from with that as well. I think when you know, you know, though. You know, like you're, you, yeah. when, when your intuition is telling you, when your energy field is telling you that there's something not right with that person, yeah. that it can't lie, you know. Um, Absolutely. Energy cannot lie, <laughs> I suppose. 
And that's why it's good that you do get to know your own energy. Yeah. And then you can confidently say, well, that's not me. And I think that that's that's right in what you're saying, though, John. You know, like you need to know your own energy first. Yeah. You know, if you're not coming from a place of balance, then possibly you might need to look at you first and then exactly. decide. Um, so Chantel saying, I'm lost in not judging someone or listening to my intuition. I am lost with what? With that and like to learn what is right. I'm trying to get my head down that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lost in not judging someone or listening to my intuition. I don't, I don't quite get that, Chantel. I don't know if you can word it in a different way. Um, if I made sense, no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Is it making sense to you, John? So, fr from what I'm what I'm taking from that is that you're maybe you're lost and you don't want to judge someone, but then you want to listen to your intuition at the same time. And you're trying to figure out whether it's right to listen to your intuition or judge someone or th does that make sense yeah just kind of tuning into the energy of you but i think where chantelle is at a stage where right, she's saying she doesn't like to judge people but i feel like, again it's a wee bit more about chantelle as well mm -hmm. it's about Believing in herself, trusting in herself, trusting in her energy, trusting in the feelings that she's get, she she gets. If that makes sense to her. Yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean that these people are bad or negative people. It just no. means that you know your energy does not tie with those that certain person. You know, so you know, for instance, you know, we've got Claire who works with us at the shop. Claire, as she's saying there, judgment um, is just a thought. But Claire and I get on very, very well. Claire's like my sister. You know, um, we've yeah. got a really good friendship and a really good bond. But, you know, there's certain people that Claire is friends with or, um, you know, has in her life that I might not particularly get on well with. Mm -hmm. And equally, there may be people in my life that Claire doesn't get on well with. Doesn't mean that they're they're bad people. It just means that you know our energy cannot align with each other. Yeah, it's not compatible. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's like a relationship, you know. Yeah, so you're going to have that that of friction. Yeah, just like I said, when the spirit world blend, you get that that friction. So it's just like two powerful energies. Yeah, and that, that that's such a good point as well, John, because we were actually speaking about this in my mediumship class, and um, it was very much that, you know, I might be the kind of medium who gets the knit and bacon grannies that, you know, the, the wee old women that absolutely love me and be able to give really brilliant evidential mediumship from that or whatever. And then Claire might get the the young men who have, you know, been successful with suicide or young men who, um, you know, have maybe had terrible illnesses or whatever it might be. But Claire might be the type of medium that just gets young folk coming through all the time. And these are just examples, you know. But again, it's, it's because our energy is compatible with Absolutely. their energy. Yeah, maybe for some reason I tend to get a lot of swearers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you just get that second just to catch it and stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I remember way back when I, when I very first started standing on public platforms and delivering messages from the spirit world, I remember um, 
very clearly always standing on my tiptoes and never quite realizing why I was standing on my tiptoes. And I'd said to um, my tutor at the time, I said, I'm all, I always find that I'm standing on my tiptoes. And she says, well, most of your communicators are always female. She says, and I've been doing that. Oh, you know, like you're, you're communicating with female communicators, and then when you're when you're connecting with the male energy, your heels go down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I was connecting with people that were walking about in high heels most of their life. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, the energy is going to like tie in with that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So does does anybody have any final questions? Because we've got four minutes left, and then we're gonna we're gonna go because the first ten minutes we were we, we weren't able to actually talk to you. But does anybody have any more questions for John on the aura? And John, I think we'll get you back as well, and we can do a wee bit more um a, a wee bit more chat about the aura and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's it's quite a big. It opens it up quite a lot. As I said, we think it's just this cloud of colour, but it opens up so many aspects of life as well. Yeah. It affects so many aspects of life. I think the thing is as well is that people can be so focused on what colour is my aura? What um what does my aura look like? Uh, but your your aura is, is such a complex thing. It's made up of your diet, it's made up of your environment, it's made up of Absolutely. how you're living your life, isn't it? Yeah. It's just how you, you are being, you do live like that and say you're going to the, the greatest, shiniest spot in the world. Mm -hmm. the, the simple things affect it like a glass of wine, a bit of chocolate. <laughs> That, that answers Louise's question then. So have you measured someone's aura when they're eating? Yeah, we had somebody one night and they hang the sensor. They were a chocoholic. And the worst thing I could do was give them a bit of chocolate and their aura just exploded. And you could actually see it in their whole presence. That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> And I've did it with somebody eating something that they didn't like mm -hmm. and just the adverse effect on their aura. Uh, Catherine there is asking, can you correct your own aura? I think that goes back to what we said initially there. It's not yeah. it's not necessarily correcting it. It's about like finding balance within your own self, isn't it, John? Yeah, it's learning to discipline it as well. And just how you can build it up. It's like taking the walks in nature. Again, I know some of the girls watching that. You see, I see their toes where they're out walking in nature, and that is having some effect on them. And yeah. They might feel it, they might not, but it does have some effect. I think if you're, if you're, you know, and we were speaking about this, Louise and I, the other day on one of the surgeries, and, you know, when you're having or when you're eating beige foods all the time, <laughs> um, you know, like when we, if you talk about that, you know, beige food is pies, sausage rolls, bread yeah. and butter, crisps, um, you know, like potatoes, starchy, fatty foods. Mm -hmm. Your energy field isn't going to resonate the same way, is it? No, it's going to tell on the stomach, isn't it? Yeah. And you, you do start to feel, obviously, you'll feel it in the physical body, but it does tell on the energy body. How you're feeling physically tells on you energetically. So and I think these companies use color psychology as well. Yeah. So, like, say, McDonald's and KFC, they they use a red and yellow, don't they? Yeah. Which resonates with the, the two energy centres. That's why when you go buy them, you always feel that you're a bit hungry and you want to go in. <laughs> so it's like they're, they're pulling you in. <laughs> Never thought of it like that, actually. Yeah. Because, you know, even though the food inside their packaging is beige, 
Mm -hmm. The packaging's brightly coloured and it's inviting, isn't it? So, yeah, ah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's all colour psychology they use. I never thought about it like that. So that that makes complete sense as well, you know, and it, it's a good tie mm -hmm. in tomorrow when we're talking to Susan again about colour. Yeah. So. If you think about it as well, you decorate your, your home so that it, it feels good. Mm -hmm. So that'll then, it's like the, I mean, I'd done this one in white. This used to be my son's room. And he used to bring dark blue, and mm -hmm. he got to the stage where he just he lived here, and he, you could see him starting to come down, so depressed. Mm -hmm. To one day, I decided that enough's enough. So I started painting the walls just a lighter shade of blue, and he picked up a wee bit. So then I finished the decorating. Before you know it, he was. Away in holiday with his girlfriend, he's now moved out and away with his girlfriend. <laughs> it just shows you though how you know your environment can really have an effect on your energy. And uh, I put the colour changing lights in as well. So, mm -hmm. do you know um, what? What I've really taken from today, and what I'm sure most people have taken from today, is your aura is much more complex than people think you know it's not just a snapshot of it it, it is made up of how bit how 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 we sleep how we eat how we exercise you know how good we are to ourselves you know um music it's made up of yeah. like everything absolutely everything isn't it yeah Plus, it's been recording your life since the, the day you were born. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it, it really is a fascinating subject that we could actually talk forever on. Yeah. Because it's constantly changing, isn't it? Absolutely. So, many layers that's in it and what they all do as well. Yeah. Next week, John, what I think would be quite a good thing to do if you wanted to come back on, um, I don't know how you feel about that, but if you wanted to come back on, um, what we could do is, you know, uh, uh, show people a few videos, show people a few examples of, you know, the, the different energy centres and how they're measured. And, um, yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I've still got... Even a couple from up in the soul man, I still get them on the system. So we really should them. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to see, would you guys like to see the the actual system itself and see how it measures things um, and how it measures the energy field? I'll give them a couple of seconds because they're all a uh, the, there's a 30 second delay on this, John. We we hear each other live, but they, they hear us 30 seconds after. <laughs> so, that's us for today, John. Um, I'm sure that people will keep commenting anyway, and you know, if there is anything that you would love to hear John speak about in the Soul Man Surgeries, then um, please do let me know. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> um, definitely do that next week. Um, I don't know, John. How you? How do you feel about coming on next Thursday? Yeah, that's good. Not as if I've got anybody to go. <laughs> that's you're committed now. <laughs> yeah. No, and, well, I thoroughly enjoyed this morning. I'm also, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to yourself and Susan as well about this. But what I would also really love to do is when we can all be in person again, um, we're later on in the year, we're gonna um, develop a workshop that will be myself, John, and Susan. John will be able to measure people's energy before and after. And Susan will be doing work on, you know, like how to self-regulate and how to get yourself into a good place and a good space. John will give the, you know, the energy part of it. 
um, and I'll just facilitate the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that'll be a really good workshop, you know, because people will be able to see how were you when you started the day and what was your energy like, yeah. and then how were you at the end of the day. So there'll be this measurable thing where you'll be able to see, like, wow, look at the difference in you through the day. Mm-hmm. So we'll do that. that. Um, now that I've got John nodding and saying yes, he's also committed to that as well, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ask people live and they kind of say, no, it's great. Honestly, it really is. <laughs> um, so tomorrow, guys, we will have um, the very lovely Susan Watson here again speaking about colour therapy and what she's what she's um, been learning about colour therapy and how colour basically changes everything, doesn't it, John? Oh, um, absolutely. So we're, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow with Susan. And then that's us till Monday. And we've got Susan again on Monday. And we're going to be talking with Susan on Monday about hypnotherapy, which is really cool. So that's us for the Soul Man Surgery today. A um, little bit later than planned, but obviously those first 10 minutes we couldn't talk to you because of the technology. I hope you really enjoyed today. And John, as always, a huge big thank you from me to you for for coming along. Stick with me, though. Don't go running away because we'll go behind the scenes and have a look at it before we go. Um, But I shall see you guys tomorrow um, with Susan Watson. Take care. Bye for now. Say bye, John. Bye, folks. Take care. Oh, 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 oh,